Um, here we will talk about version control with Daniel today and tomorrow. Um, I will use this uh, this portrait setup, and sometimes I will need the terminal, and then then it will be down here. Sometimes I will show something on the website, then it will be up here. So I will be changing sizes, and all the commands that I will type, they will show up down here so that you can catch up if I move move away too fast, which I will try not to do. Please let me know if readability is not good or anything can be improved. We, How do you find the material that we will go to? Um, here on, on the workshop page, there is schedule, so the schedule tab. And this is where we are. And you can click on this page and everything that we will show this week and next week is open source. It will stay open source. You can find it later. It will not disappear. Um, I keep it open a little bit now just for navigation and to give you an overview of what we plan to do. And then I will zoom in to make it a bit more readable. So today and tomorrow, Dania and me will try to give our future selves a gift, the gift of uh, reproducible programming, the gift of version control. So this is something that we will be very happy uh, that we have learned. Um, some of you, many of you already use version control. Many of you already use Git. But we will try to start from zero so to get everybody on board. And those who know a bit more, you can you can help others by asking questions, answering questions, if you are in the same room, helping out. So let's do this. Um, maybe, so what we plan to do today is we want to motivate, we want to get you through basics. Uh, we, will, we will discuss how branches work and how, so how many people can work at the same time or how one person can work on multiple things more or less at the same time, then how we can combine these developments. Tomorrow, we will take it a step further and we will then learn how can we share our work with others via GitHub, GitLab, via the internet, how we can collaborate. We will get a taste of collaboration tomorrow and then do a lot more of that on Thursday. Also tomorrow we will learn how can we navigate in an existing project written maybe by somebody else or by our past selves where we forgot where things are. And tomorrow we will close with practical advice. We will, with Dania, we will do it in a co-teaching style. So we are two here, we will ask each other questions. We will help each other out watching the hack and So this will not be a monologue. Uh, the more questions we get, the better. Please keep them coming. I also see that sometimes the hack and document can feel a little bit slow. Let's see, hopefully it's still workable, but please keep these questions coming. Let's go into motivation. And let me zoom in in here. So what, what is this all about? Uh, what is the, what is Git, what is, what is version control? Why do we do this? Um, so version control, I try to summarize it in maybe three points. It's something that can record snapshots of our work, typically as we write scripts or code, but we will see that it's more than that. So we want to record snapshots and then we can come back to them. And this will make it all more reproducible also. It also implements branching because sometimes you need to work on, you have the same project, but you, you work on different aspects and branches will help us to keep this nicely organized. It will also help us to keep project organized when we are more than one person in a project. And then 
combining these developments doesn't have to be manual. We will see that Git is very good. Git and version control is really good at combining, merging developments from person A and person B. So the tool that we use is Git. We will also use GitHub, which is a web service where we can share Git repositories and collaborate. But the idea is a bit more general. So what are the things that we can snapshot with Git? And maybe maybe I can ask Dania. So what 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 do you typically use Git and GitHub for? Oh, I typically use for my software course, uh, my um, scripts, uh, to version control, and uh, the functionality I like more is uh, unlimited undoing. I could. Uh, work on that uh, my uh, crazy ideas and then uh, roll back to the working direct, um, functionality of this, the same code. That's the uh, most uh, uh, awesome part for me. Uh, so mm -hmm. last the collaboration and reproducibility, of course. Mm -hmm. that is a great point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, what did you want to say? No, yeah, I, and uh, there are uh, documents and the um, website resources. We uh, at work we use the documentation uh, with Git, so that's also I use day to day. Uh, for... Oh yeah, yeah, we do that. It can also be used for manuscripts. So if your manuscript is in Markdown, LaTeX, Quarto, R Markdown, you name it. Uh, Git can be really nice to, again, have unlimited undoability and collaboration. And well, I like what you also said that it, for me, it um, it removes. I'm less afraid to make changes and make improvement because I know that I can go back. I'm also less afraid to make changes to a project with other people because I know I will not affect them if if we organize it in a nice way. Here we have an example of a version control. Uh, it's some type of version control. It's from a friend of mine, used with permissions, but I have anonymized it a little bit. So I changed the name of this library to mylib, and I changed the name of the code to some code. This is a directory listing. And this was in 2007, 8, 9. And, and that was the time when, when we, I was working in the same office with, with, with this friend and we discussed version control and uh, this was how they did version control until then. So they, they did snapshots, archives and gave them a date and a version. And this is workable, but what are the, what are problems with this approach? Should we ask that via Hack and Lee? Or should I ask it, uh, Dania? Or should we? Should I answer it? I don't know. Maybe I should uh, yeah. take too much time. Um, here you can also find one possible answer. So what? I don't know. What, what are the problems that you see, Dania? And I can maybe uh, also comment. Uh, firstly, I see a lot of files, mm -hmm. uh, duplicate files, and uh, uh, then it's it's very difficult to find uh, where the important changes made. And tracking the changes is very difficult from these kind of uh, duplicate files. Yeah. And I have to un uh, untar these uh, tar files and go through the each uh, session, um, each code, what uh, to see what has changed with the Git. I could do within uh, uh, some commands. Yeah. So this TGZ, you can maybe you haven't seen this, but this this is similar to zip files, and the problem is. There are several problems, but one problem is there will be the point in time when you find there is a problem in my code. I want to know how long was it there. And now I need to unpack all of these things and look into each of them individually. The other problem that we will have is that once you start collaborating with others, it will also become painful because then if I want to collaborate with somebody, I give to somebody the latest version, which is maybe this one. And then we do our own thing and we meet again half a year later or a year later. And now, how do we combine this? 
so let's let's see there is there is hopefully a better way and there is a better way and this is what we will teach so a little bit more motivation Dani has mentioned we have this unlimited undoing we can go back we can roll back we can always find again a working version I will show you and Dani will show you how we can use branching to work on several features in one code in one project we will see how this will really simplify collaboration. And maybe you have experienced some of these questions that I wrote down here. I will just finish my work and then I, you can start with your changes or can you please send me the latest version? Um, you, never, you never got the code I sent by email, weird. Maybe the spam filter marketed it as malicious. So sending code via email is really boring. Where is the latest version? Which version? It, are you using which version have the authors used in the paper that I'm trying to reproduce? So I have seen these questions. Uh, Daniel, have you seen these questions? Is, does that ring? Does that sound familiar? Uh, it sounds familiar uh, a decade back. <laughs> uh, yeah, the spamming. Uh, uh, but after uh, this, uh, we started use of um, version control system. This is good, uh, good to collaborate with others. That's what mm -hmm. we do at Works now. Yeah. So, so there is a better way. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, I did not interrupt. Yeah, no, no. Please go ahead. So there is maybe the main thing is really reproducibility. Um, because at some point we want to publish our work, and then it's nice if we can indicate that this is the precise version that I have used. And if you want to re rerun and get the same result, you can use the same version. And also when you find a bug in your code and it will happen to all of us, we want to know when precisely was this bug introduced because that will that can be important. Uh, have we published results? Maybe we need to inform our collaborators. If we don't have any version control, we, we are completely in the dark, we don't know. It can be fun to compare version control with other collaborative tools. I will now not do this for the sake of time. I will scroll through here. Um, and why do we demonstrate version control with Git and GitHub? Because these are the most popular tools. They are not the only tools and we list, there are a couple of more. There, is, there are different, different web services. There are also different version control tools, but we show you those that are most popular. Even if you decide to use something different, it's very likely that you will be exposed to Git and GitHub through your colleagues and, and, uh, and peers. Of course, all of this comes at a price. It's one more thing to learn, but we think it's really worth it. And we think it's worth it also that you start using this, convince your collaborators. Uh, our future selves will be grateful for that. I would like to close this motivation session with a real life example before we go into the command line. And before we look at the details, that we get an overview from 10 kilometers altitude and see how does it all fit together? Where do we want to be at? So at the end of this week, what do we want to be able to do? And the the repository that I like to show is, it's actually a famous Git, GitHub repository. It's one of, the, one of the codes that has been used for the Event Horizon Telescope imaging. This is one of the many people behind it, one of the many projects behind it, but it's on GitHub. Oh, you can, we can open it up, it's public. Um, and I should, sorry, I should make that. How do I make it? I want to switch to a light background. Sorry for that. Light. All right. It's this one. Uh, the code is there. There are a couple of things that we can do. Uh, we, can, we can see that there are these snapshots, commits. There are over 2,000 of these snapshots. And all of them, I can click on this number, all of them are recorded here. And I could go into any of these and undo 
and find out how was the code back then, how was the project back then. What else can I see here? I can see, and we will learn right now, it's not, we are not teaching you how to navigate GitHub. Um, we will learn all of this. There is some more I want to show, but maybe I will see it once I zoom out. Yes, there are branches. Uh, and maybe I will, it will be useful if I click on insights network. So this graph here, this graph is uh, these different development lines, these different branches. These can be are sometimes different people or the same people working on different things in the same code. And these development lines, they are branching out, but then they are combining again. And we will, we will see how we can do that. This project is public and anybody, if the license allows, anybody can take a copy of this project and make changes to the copy. And I can see that up here. So there are close to 500 forks. We will talk more about forks on Thursday, but these are copies of the repository. Where can I see all the forks? Here can I see. 500 forks. So these are people who copy the project and to either back it up or to make changes in their own working space. What else did I want to show? Oh yeah, two more things. With tools like GitHub or GitLab, I can refer to code portions. So there is a, there is, this is some Python code out of this project and I can, I can select a code portion and I can send somebody a link to this code portion. So if I email you this link, it will, you can open it up in a browser. This is such a more nicer way than sending somebody an email saying that download this project, please go to that file, then find the line 66. And this is what I'm talking about. I can just send the I can send the the portion. And one more thing that I want to show, and that is maybe the most important feature of version control for me, is the enormous value of the annotation feature. And we will we will learn how to do that tomorrow. I'll open this example file again in the same project. And let me tell you what, what we see here. We see two, the screen is split into two halves. On the right hand side, I see the project, the code. In this case, it's Python, but it could be LaTeX or R or anything else. This could be your project. And each of these lines has a number, so these are numbered. But now what is really interesting is that for each line number, let's say 31, on the left hand side, it will list what was the change that modified this line last? So this line of the code was modified last two years ago in this change. And this is incredibly valuable for several reasons. If you find code and you don't know who wrote it, who can I ask questions, who, who maybe has understanding, I can find it out. Also, there will be the moment when you find a bug in the code. What if there is a problem here? And you want to know precisely when was it modified last, five years ago. Was it before the nature paper or after the nature paper? Hopefully after. But at least I have, I have a possibility to find it out. So this is what I really love about Git and GitHub and version control. What did, what did I forget before we move on? What are anything, any questions we should raise from Hack and D? Uh, we could take the uh, question. Uh, what is the difference between Git and GitHub? So Git is a version control tool. So it's uh, it's tracking the changes and it can be done anywhere. But the GitLab or GitHub is a web services that uses Git, the cloud services that uses Git. I think it's already answered on the hack MD, mm -hmm. but uh, it would be nice uh, if we could uh, say about what is a Git repository. How do you define a Git repository, Radama? 
Yeah, I think we will see that now in a moment when we move into basics, but uh, we will start with a repository. It's a collection of files on my computer, and that will be done with Git. Uh, but then on Wednesday, tomorrow, we will then learn how can we share this, this collection of files? How can I share it with others through the internet? And then we put it on services like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, et cetera, can be your own server. And then you still have the Git repository, but you also have this, you have this web interface in front of it. So this is Git, so there are all these files and there are the different versions, but there is more to it. There is issue tracking and change proposals and discussions, and you can have, you can, do it graphically instead of instead of in through the terminal. We will still start through the terminal so that uh, so that we understand the basics and we understand what is really happening. But once we get the understanding, we will move back to the web and then use these web tools to collaborate. So what we don't want to do here, we want to now learn how to really start a Git repository. We want to create our possibly first Git repository, make some snapshots, and now we will call them commits, and learn a little bit about the structure of it, um, how to inspect the history, and how to write useful commit log message messages, where we document what have we changed and why. I will uh, ex explain a few concepts, but then we will have an exercise session. Is that so? Yes, that is so. Good. So we have already, I, I mentioned it a couple of times, we want to record safety snapshots. Um, now we will call these commits. In Git, Git will create a folder, a directory on our hard drive, and it will be called .git in the project where we initialize it, and everything that we will create will go into there. So let's create something. Uh, I think at the moment, maybe, so don't type yet. I will tell you when you can also start typing. Oh, I want to start with this nice analogy, which at least helps me to, to visualize what is what is happening. And when we will when we will record these commits, these snapshots, we will do it in two steps. So whenever I want to save a commit for some file or some other files, I will do it in two steps. I will first git add them. And sometimes this is called staging. So I will first stage the file, and then I will commit it. And the way that I like to think about it is, imagine you're taking a photo. Staging is it's a bit like focusing your camera and telling everybody to please move into the picture, move closer together, the staging. And then when you are really happy with, with the setup, then I press, press the shutter, and now the photo is record it, and it goes into the archive, and the archive is the .git folder. So we will do it in two steps. And then I can edit the, the scene again. I can add some code to it. I can stage the situation, git add, and once I'm happy, I do another commit. And we will try to do as many as possible. The more, the better commits. Now comes a tricky point because before I'm almost ready now to do some typing in the terminal. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we have configured the Git. And those of you who have followed our install instructions, you are all ready to go. But I suspect that maybe not everybody has um, uh, gone through all the install instructions, especially those who have signed up later. And there is much more to it. But all we need today is we need to do these three things at the minimum. So we need to tell Git 
of who I am and what is my email address. And where will this information go to? This information will go, well, when we now record commits, it will go into the log, into the log of changes. And if you haven't done this, now I ask you to, to type this in your terminal. If you are on Windows, this is the moment to open up Git Bash. And in here, in my case, it will be this, my name. OK, you will not get this error because I have a bit of a weird system. So in your case, it will work. Um, your email address. And then you need to select your favorite text editor. It could be, it could be Emacs or uh, Dania. What is your favorite text editor? Editor. It's Vim. It could be Vim. Yeah. Uh, it could be Visual Studio Code or Atom or Notepad plus plus, or it could be Nano. So if you don't, if this doesn't make any sense and you don't have your favorite text editor yet, we recommend to you to choose Nano. And this is also what I will do. So I will do, Dania and me will do now everything today and tomorrow in Nano. This is not our, the, the editor that we know well. So we will be slow and do a lot of mistakes, but that's maybe good because then we will not go too fast. So if you don't have a favorite text editor yet, choose this. And this is important when we then later interact with Git and edit commit messages, this will be the editor that will open up Otherwise, you, will, you might get an editor that you don't recognize. So these three things, please, everybody should do these three things. And how can you find out whether you, if you are unsure, did I configure it now? Where did it go to? You can do this command, git commit list, git config dash dash list. And it will show you all the configuration. Now, in my case, it will show a little bit too much, but I will, I will highlight the important things. The important things are name and email. Then there is a lot of other things, which I now will tell you later how you can configure all the other things if you like them. And then there is the editor. Where is it? Oh, it's here. Oof, in my case, it's Vim. So I should set this to Nano. And how do I get out of this with Q? Q. And are we ready to move on now? I don't know. Should I wait a moment? Maybe I can move on. But if later you see complaints from Git that, oh, I don't know who you are. Can you please send your name and email? This is what's needed. If you later see an editor that doesn't make any sense, and you don't know how to exit it, then this was the problem. So then you, you know what to set. Now we are all ready to, to do some type along and create to get our Git, Git repository. What we will do is we will not create, we could create a, co a Python code, but then it would be only interesting to those of you who write Python. We decided it would be more fun and more, I don't know, inclusive if we instead together create a um, cooking recipe, because probably everybody can relate to cooking recipes, but not everybody can relate to Python or R or C or Fortran or some other language. So now, in note to me, I should encourage you to type along. So now please try to follow what I do. And all everything I type will show up down here. I will the first thing I will do is I will create a new folder, a new new directory called I will call it recipe. And in there I will there will be all the files I create and there will be all the Git repository. If anything happens now and things don't go well, it's not a problem because then you can solve it in the exercise session also. So the exercise session will not contain too much work. We want to give you the time 
to solve also issues that might pop up. So I have created this repository, uh, this directory recipe. I go into the directory. My prompt changed a little bit. It might look different than your prompt. This is not a problem. And the first step I will do before doing anything, and this is often my first reflex or when starting a new project is to, to do git init. With this, I initialize a new git repository. And all that happened is that in the folder that I was in, it created a new folder called .git. And everything that we will do in the following, it will be recorded into the folder .git. If I remove this .git, then my Git repository is gone. Then the history will be gone, all the commits will be gone, and all the branches will be gone. So everything is in here. And tomorrow, we will take this part and put it on GitHub. My most favorite Git command is git status. And I use that always when I want to find out what's, what's going on in this folder, what is the status of it. Maybe I was working on it a few days ago. Now I come back to it. It's a safe command. It doesn't modify anything. It gives you information about where we are. And the, the relevant information here is that we don't have any commits yet. And there is also nothing to commit. But it gives me hints of what to do. Maybe I should start creating files and use git add to stage them. And we remember the photo shoot. So let's create some files. Let's arrange them nicely into some photo. And let's make these snapshots. Our goal now is to create two files in this cooking project. Um, one file will be called instructions. And in there, you can put a couple of instructions. We start with chopping avocados, onion, squeezing lime. We will add salt. And at the end, we will mix well. This guacamole recipe is not perfect, but we will then, it will evolve as we go, and we will improve it over time. So we have instructions. We also need some shopping list ingredients. We will start with two avocados, one lime, and one teaspoon of salt. And then again, over time, we will improve this. I know that for many of you, this is now very basic kit, but please bear with us. I'm pretty sure that today, and I'm certain that by tomorrow, we will all learn new, new things that we didn't know. But it is important for us to get everybody on the same page. So please do that with me. I will now create this file instructions.txt, and I will use nano for this. And if you... If you already know another editor really well, you can use that one instead. But in my case, I type nano instructions txt. This, will, this file doesn't exist. If it doesn't exist yet, nano will then open it and give me the possibility to create it for me. There is this copy paste copy button. Let's see whether this will work. Copy. Suspense, how do I paste it in here? Oh yeah, it worked. So you can copy paste the whole thing. If somehow it doesn't work, you can also type it. It's not too much text. So I have this file. I pasted in some text and now I want to save it. What I will do is this exit, control X, and now it's asked me, do I want to save it? Yes, I want to save it with this name. And I will do the same thing with ingredients. Oh yeah, I can use this, copy, paste, control X. Yes, I want to save it. Yes. And when you are done, and I will give give us now again a minute, I want to 
please type git status again. And while I give us this little break, I have a feeling that I will need maybe three, four minutes of demonstration before we are ready to move on. And to, to Dania and Richard, the question is whether we should schedule the break before the exercise or after the break exercise so we can, we will need, we will need 20 minutes for the exercise because we also want people to say hi to each other. Maybe it is the first time that they meet. Anyway, think about it. I will need here three, four minutes more. I have created these files. I type git status, and it informs me that there are these two files in, in here, but, but they are untracked. Git doesn't track changes of these files yet. It doesn't do anything automatically. We need to tell it actively to please track the changes, and now, I remind us that we will do it in two steps. I will first stage the file, git add ingredients, git add instructions. And before, before committing, I will type again git status. And now the status changed, also the color changed. It changed from red to green. Now these files are ready to be, these changes are ready to be committed. Let's commit. And um, I will do it this way. Git commit minus M, what is T minus M? That's, uh, that's the commit message. It will, we will see where this ends up. Here we will document what did we do and why did we do it. Here we start with a short commit message. Later we will show you how you can have longer messages. Sometimes you need to write more paragraphs. So let's do this. And it gave me some information here, but uh, what, what really happened? Git status. There is nothing to commit. The working tree seems clean. There are no modifications. So what happened here now? Let me inspect a bit the directory I have. With, with ls-l, I can see what are the contents of my directory. There are these two files. But with ls-la, I can get a little bit more information. I can see these hidden folders. There is the dot git, and there are these commits. And how can I see these commits? I think this will you will see as part of the exercise. Um, maybe before break or exercise, I have used this git commit minus m. And what if we don't remember what minus m means? There are many ways to look for help. I typically ask the internet and Stack Overflow, but if you don't have an internet connection, you can also do something like this, git help commit. So on any, any git command, I can ask git help that command, git help commit or git help status. And then, the, then I will get a lot of information here you will see that there are many, many, many options. But if I was interested, what was this minus M? Here it is. It's a possible ability to give the commit message. You don't have to remember any of these. Bottom line is I can find help whether I'm on the internet or not. Uh, before, before we move into an exercise, I want to reconnect a bit with what we did before the break. I created two files and one commit. If you didn't manage to do the one commit, it's not a problem. You can then start with that one commit during the exercise session. 
And I can maybe already give a sneak preview of one command that you will see in the exercise, which is git log. And it will tell me what has happened in this repository in the past. In my case, there is only one commit. I did it. And this was the commit message. So this is where it ends up in. And your goal in the exercise will be to create additional commits. Now, any question that we should pick up from HackMD before moving on? There was one question about, go ahead. Uh, probably in your, uh, wise to mention that uh, but, um, not changing anything on bar chassis is not a part of the course. You can do it uh, later probably with customizing the terminal and all. Yes. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe to, we will not go into that, but I can mention where you can find it. So if I zoom out here in my material, let's zoom out. Oh. Is it here? Yes, under under reference customizing Git, you find some hints on if you want colors, auto completion. You you find some hints in there. We will not go into there, but I want this is where you can find it. Um, I think the other thing that I want to mention at this point is that you might have noticed that we have more on the website than we will cover. It doesn't mean that we are slow or that you are slow. It means that we made a choice of putting more onto the course material than we plan to cover because we, we want you to have access to more resources. So we will select the, the important things. It doesn't mean that we, we are slow or anything like that. Now, let me explain what the goal is of the exercise. In the exercise, you have 20 minutes. Maybe start first. If you are in a group, say hello to everybody else, introduce yourself. Um, in this exercise, you start with, you have this repository with one, one commit already, and then make two changes. Make a change to the ingredients and make a change to the instructions. But do not git add yet. Before you do git add, first try git diff and have a look what it means. Try to make sense of it. And then in this case, we will not we will not commit both of these changes into, into the same commit because they are unrelated. Adding half an onion and adding an instruction to enjoy are unrelated to each other. We will put them into two separate commits. And you find instructions on how to do that in, in this green box. There are also some other things that we ask you to try. So your goal will be to to go through this green box. For some of you, it will be too little to do. And if you scroll down further on the page, you find optional exercises. So these are bonus. But so for everybody, it's this exercise basic one. But further down, there is basic two, three, four. And you can try this as well. And when we are back from the exercise 20 minutes later, we will restart here with Daniel. But try as many of these exercises as you like. Ask questions on HackMD. We will watch this and pick it up. So this is where we left off. Um, I made these. I made these two modifications to the file that we asked you to do in the in the exercise. And now what is what is the my favorite command of all git commands is git status. I have these two modifications. If I'm now unsure about before committing this, how can I see these modifications? What should I do here? Git div. This was also part of the exercise. So let, let's make more space here. Git diff shows that there is some extra output, but the things that I look at is the file names. This is the one file, this is the other file. And it shows what has been added plus and what has been removed. In this case, nothing got removed. So there's an addition to the, to the ingredients file. There is an addition to the instructions file. 
in our lessons under customizing, I also provide links on, you can in fact customize how this looks if this if you want to improve the output of Git diff. Anyway, these are the modifications. And now, now I ask you to, to commit them into, in, in separate commits because they are unrelated. So Dania, what should I do now? Uh, Let me uh, tell me what I should do and I will type. I think you should uh, stage first. Yes, and I will stage them separately. Mm -hmm. And let me just make sure that I do exactly what we. I will first stage the ingredients. Yes. Whoop, git add ingredients. And if I now inspect its status, I see that one of them is staged, the other one is not. We got a question on HackMD, and I really appreciate it. Question. I don't know, 20. maybe it was 25. Yeah. Um, why do we do it in two steps? Why not committing in one step? It's actually possible. It's possible to commit the changes directly in one command. We do it in two steps because we believe that later it will be useful for you to do it in two steps because it, it allows me to prepare a commit. In this case, I'm staging a portion of my changes and I can prepare it. This is particularly useful if I have many modifications in my project, but they are somehow unrelated. And if I don't want to bake them together into the same commit, git add allows me to prepare this commit. On the other hand, it's also perfectly fine to, to use git commit directly. And especially if you are new to git, I wouldn't overthink the commits too much. I would rather do too many commits. It's not a problem if they are unrelated or not perfect. So let, let the perfect not be the enemy of the good enough. But this is why I did it, so that I can stage this individually. And now let me commit this one and add half an onion. And this will now only take the staged stage one. Okay, and now let's do the, the other one, git add instructions, git status. Now I see only this one. And now in the exercise, we ask you what happens if you leave out the minus M, git commit. I can write a message here, but what if I leave it out? And what you have maybe noticed is that if you leave it out, it will open up your the editor that you have configured. It might be the nano, or it might be, in this case, it's BI. And here on top, I can then write a commit message. Oh, do not forget to enjoy. And here I can write even more, more paragraph, paragraph, more context. And when you save it and exit, this will become the commit message. What did we do then? Git log. Now I have three commits. First commit, second commit, third commit. The newest commit is on top. Um, you have maybe also tried this git log one line. And it will it will display uh, it will display only the first line of the commit message. So it's good to get an overview of each commit. It will also, for each of these commits, you have maybe noticed that they have these 40 character identifiers. They are unique identifiers for each commit. And this git log one line displays the beginning of the beginning of these. And with this, you can also refer to changes by their identifiers. Okay. Maybe we should talk about how to write useful commit messages. Yeah. So what is important? What matters in a commit message? Uh, tell the story. What you are uh, yes. doing? What, uh, what did you develop? Or it should be uh, understand, um, 
it, it, uh, it should be self-explanatory to someone, uh, your, to your collaborators or uh, someone who sees your code or what you have done mm -hmm. with the commit message that I would say about the use of commit. Yeah, it's really telling a story of how this project evolved. And we have learned that commit message can be one line, it can be more, it can be paragraphs and paragraphs. The, the first line is the most important one. This one should summarize it because when I type git log one line, I only see the first line. When we go to GitHub later on the web overview, we often see only the first line. The first line is what, what the persons will see first. And then if they want to know more information, they can click on each of these commits. So the first line matters, it should be descriptive. Here's a good example. Um, something, some threshold, some, some variable was increased from something to 2.0, but it also gives a context. It gives what was the motivation for this change. And this is based on a discussion that happened in maybe an issue number 123. We will later see how we can cross-reference commits and issue disc uh, and discussions. So here, there was some discussion that happened, and we refer to it. And this makes it then also easier to understand why something happened. The, the why something was changed is often more important than what has changed. And why is that? If I look again at my git log, if I want to know what happened here in this commit, well, I can always find out git show what happened here. This happened, half an onion was added. So I can always find out what happened, but I might not remember why was it added. What was the motivation? So the why I find really important, unless it's obvious. You can cross-reference. Um, there are some bad examples for commit messages, but I also really recommend to, to browse good examples. A good way to write good mess commit messages to, to maybe browse some of your favorite projects. If you use Python, how maybe browse how do these projects do commit messages? SciPy, NumPy, Pandas, Julia, in how do our projects learning from others? So this is, uh, I learn a lot by watching other people program and how do they organize their commit messages. Again, it doesn't mean that we, we should try to make everything perfect because then the risk is that we will do nothing. It's better to do many imperfect commits than no commits. But here we can, we can get some inspiration. There are also some nice blog posts that discuss, give recommendations for, for good commit messages. Uh, I also recommend to write them in English because that seems to be the common language in programming. Also, so that it's understandable, often it has to be understandable by somebody else than you. Many projects that start as a single person project then evolve into a collaborative project with many people involved. All right. Um, maybe one more thing before moving on to branches. And that is a question, should we, so we learned how to git add, git commit. Now should we git add and git commit everything or not? Um, and the answer is, yeah, what do you, what's, what should we do here? Uh, I, I wouldn't add all my files if I am doing some kind of uh, collaborative works, especially the auto generated file when I compile some code and also the binary files. Yes, so, so now we, and I apologize for the jargon that we use, but depending on your programming language project, there is typically that files that are generated in Python, if you write Python, you have maybe seen these files, compiled objects. Um, in If you write C, C++, Fortran, 
you have maybe seen files that end with dot o or dot a or archive files and object files these are files that are generated from your source code if you write manuscripts in latex or markdown you have maybe seen it generates pdf and some other time some other generated files these we these files we should not add to the git repository or we should ignore them and so one way to ignore them is to create a file called .git ignore and in there list all the files that you want git to ignore and you can use wildcards and here are some examples and this is really important it's not just a cosmetic thing and it's not only about the hard drive size it's it's to avoid confusion because if you put the generated files into the Git repository, what might happen is that things will look differently on your computer than on your collaborator's computer if you use different operating systems, and it will be confusing. You might see files as modified, although you didn't modify them because they got regenerated in a different way. So it will reduce confusion if, if uh, these generated files, and depends on the project what they are, if you don't add them to the Git repository. And we, do we add the link somewhere? There is a service which can give you hints. No, we don't, no problem. So we will come back to this ignoring also then later when we build up our exercise projects. Another question that we got on HackMD is that, why do we start in the terminal? Is it okay to use, I don't know, GitHub desktop or, or some other graphical user interfaces. There are many. Oh, it's perfectly fine to use those. We start with the terminal because this is the common denominator. Also, it will hopefully give us a good understanding of what's going on. But it is perfectly fine if you want to use these instead or use them later because then you will know what is really happening under the hood. And these user interfaces, they allow all of these things that we do here. You can also do them in graphically. Let's summarize what we what we have learned so far. We have started with git init, and this is often the first thing I do before when I have to create a script. It doesn't have to be a big project. I start with git init. Then we git add and git commit and git add and git commit our changes. And if we do that often enough, we can always find a working version by going back. Git status, my favorite command. And then we can inspect what has happened in the past with git log. And these commands, they have lots of options on their own. We have seen git log one line, but there are other options. So we can inspect differences between commits. So if you know the identifiers, you can do git diff identifier one, identifier two, and see what happened between these two. What we haven't discussed, but this is part of an optional exercise, you can try it out later, is you can also then remove files and move files. But note that they will not get deleted from the history. They will still exist in the history if they have been tracked, but now you can remove them from your project. Yeah. There is another uh, test of understanding, maybe. Uh, we could uh, say about what is the opposite of git ignore. If we want to ignore and uh, uh, files, we can list it. But what is the uh, opposite of that? There is a question on HackMD. How do we do that? So uh, the opposite meaning that? Probably yeah. staging and uh, committing, uh, track changes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, the opposite is, is to stage them. By staging, by adding them and get committing, we are adding them to, to the Git repository. And what we really do is we are adding them to uh, we are adding them to this folder here. So all the all the snapshots are saved inside that folder. Mm -hmm. And it's a hidden folder. Uh, you might not see it when it if you're just listing the contents of the file folder, uh, the recipe folder, I mean. Yeah. 
Yes, let me let me explain this one. So yeah. here we we ask you, and I wonder whether we ask you that also in the Kennedy, maybe not yet, but the which commands below would save the changes of my file txt to an existing, and the keyword here is an existing local git repository. So the repository exists already. We made so welcome back. Uh, we are going to continue with branching and uh, merging. So you could navigate to the course material from the basics and then you will be here um, with the branching course material. So branching is an essence of uh, uh, Git, uh, especially version control. So this is, um, what does branching means? If you ask it, mean, uh, for me, it means you diverge from the main line of development and do something your own without messing up with the source code you have. Is that same for you, Ravidovan? Yes, so I use it when I want to try something out and I'm not sure whether this will really work out or I'm not sure when I will finish it. And if, and I have a lot of half finished ideas and then I put them on a branch instead of exposing it to everybody. Um, then it's also essential when we work with other people, but we will come to that. So then we need to have branches. Yeah, so it's uh, you can experiment with ideas. If we are not uh, sure about it, it's always nice to have uh, development going on uh, to, with the branches. And also uh, a person A and B can do, uh, work simultaneously in different branches and merge it at, uh, at some point of time, not at some point of time, as soon as uh, they are ready to merge. So it's, uh, um, it's an amazing tool. Uh, it's uh, what the it's an essence of the uh, version control. And when uh, when we create branches, we don't need to copy things. We are tracking the changes. So uh, now we will. Uh, in the previous session, we tracked the Lucamo recipe with the grid git, and we will continue that repo. Uh, continue the same repo uh, to test uh, branching and uh, move forward from there. So up until now, our repository, uh, repository had only one branch that uh, you initiate one, and that's the master branch. And some of you, it uh, names as main, uh, at least for me, it's main, and uh, it depends upon different how operating system you are or uh, like that. Uh, I hope it was uh, main for you as well, Radovan. Yeah, it was actually main. accidentally main. I wanted it to. I wanted it to be master, but okay. I forgot. I forgot to fix to change something. Yeah. So master and main as same actually. So um, here, uh, this is uh, uh, the linearity of the Git repository you have now. The Glucomol uh, repo. You have three commits, and you see two uh, reference master and head. Um, branch means it's a collection of uh, commits so uh, there is two reference a head will point towards the uh, latest uh, commit so if you were here we committed uh, the second time it should be this move like this and i remember that one was saying about uh, git um, branches as a sticky notes which can be changed uh, through the commits Yes, that's how I like to think of them. And uh, we also got a question about the head on HackMD. And, uh. and one way to think about head, for those of you who are old, old enough to remember cassette tapes. So if you are familiar with the concept of a cassette tape, that used to be something to, <laughs> to put audio on, uh, there was a recorder head. And uh, it, it can record on the tape and the recorder head can then move on the tape back and forth. And this is also the idea of this head sticky note, that it signifies where are we right now, but we will we can jump to different commits and then the head will move to a different place. Yeah. So when we think about branches, it's not only the current commit where the head points, we think about the collection of all commit in the branch. Uh, 
So now we want to try this, uh, uh, make branches for this glucomol recipe. Um, so we typically need to at least uh, one version of the code. So we uh, keep the master version and we will divert from that and do some development and later we will uh, merge it together. And so it it permits me to isolate uh, to different track of work. Uh, like I can create a different uh, kind of uh, recipe from the base uh, recipe from the page one. So here is an a linear uh, the, the the diagram for a uh, um, mainline development. This is the main we call master branch and you have a deviation from here to go for another branch. This is the branching point from this com commit M2, if I would say, and then you do some kind of development and this main branch development is uh, going through this. And here is the point for merging this branch together. These are the commits for main uh, major, um, master branch and uh, this is for the branch uh, the associated branch you created from this uh, point and this is how it illustrate and it's it can be more complicated in real life this is an uh, so software development and any to a source code development is not always linear it always diverge from many people work on that and there comes uh, the branching is as an uh, essential when you do that. Uh, so when whenever you are unsure about something, uh, it's always good to create a branch and work on it. And when you are fine, or if, if you think that idea is working and it's good, you could merge. And if uh, you think that crazy idea is not working, you could uh, delete the branch and come back to the uh, uh, master branch. Maybe before moving on, we, um, I wanted to re-emphasize that this, so this there's this M2 where we create a branch and we will we will soon learn how to do that. Yeah. But also interesting are these X1, X2. So these are points when, when two different developments are merged, are combined together. And it's, it's good to know that Git will help us doing, doing that automatically. We don't have to manually go through all the different lines side by side and combine them, stitch them together manually. Most of the time, it will be all automatic. It will be on command. So this is very nice. And I also like how you said that this it's a nonlinear development and it really maps nicely to how we work because we get distracted. We have to do different things. Some things never get finished and some things have to be interrupted. And, and I think this is one of the reasons why this is such a successful model. Yeah, thanks. So before going further, we will define an alias in Git. Um, this is uh, recommended for everyone to do now, but uh, for, can you see my terminal? Yeah. Yes, I can see it well. Okay, so we you have seen that, uh, um, git uh, log command uh, you uh, you have done it with it uh, like earlier so it's it gives a history of uh, all the commits you have done so we are go going to um, print all the uh, history and then we are trying to visualize it uh, nicer way that's a git gra uh, with the graph and uh, you see the uh, commit hashtag it's like 40 uh, characters so with the decorate you can uh, short uh, shorten the commit uh, first uh, how many first, uh, shorten the commit uh, hashtag and then every everything in should should be in one line this is a long command and we you can see that there are three commits and uh, the head is pointed to the latest commit in the main branch. For me, it's main. Uh, for some of you, it should be, it can be master. Uh, so there are first uh, character of this um, commit uh, hash is uh, is displayed here, and the uh, 
history of uh, one line. So we could uh, create a uh, alias for all these command rather than typing this command always uh, this long command. So that's uh, that's why our that's what we are going to do. We, you could uh, you could also try with this. You could copy and uh, paste it on your terminal, and then it uh, it we could use git graph as an alias. Uh, this is going to be used the next days as well. Mm, so it's recommended that you type along with this and try this and create a git graph uh, alias. So, so if you have done and created that alias, uh, we could uh, go with the shorter, shortest command for all these uh, commands together the same way. So this is something uh, we recommend you, try, you to try now. And at this moment, uh, we maybe don't see the usefulness yet because it's we have a very simple example. We have one branch called master or main, and we have only three commits, and they come all one after the other. But we will see the usefulness now that we start creating branches, and the graph of our work will become more complex. And then this will be very helpful, and we will use the Git graph a lot. And this is this is an alias that. I use often. And another way to look at an alias is like a shortcut. So you can define your own shortcuts. Instead of typing something all over and over, it can become boring. You can define your favorite shortcuts. In the lesson, you also find there is a site tab called aliases in configuration where you can find our most favorite shortcuts and you can draw some inspiration. OK, yeah. So. I forgot to add my history uh, tab here. So I can maybe also say that now we have a new hacker lead. It looks more responsive. Okay. Not, uh, so please, uh, so please ask questions there. The it is linked from the from our previous hacker lead. And okay. Yeah. The latest question forty seven forty eight. I'm watching this. Keep the questions coming, and I will relay. Yeah, okay. So please ask questions here if something is unclear or if there is anything you want to get, uh, um, you want us to talk about it also. So now, where are we? So we are at the main, we only have only one or one branch, that's the main. And the head is pointing towards the uh, last commit of uh, the main branch. So with Git, git branch command, we could see how many uh, branches are here now, but we have only one branch, that's uh, main branch. And this star means the header is pointing towards, the head is pointing towards the main uh, main branch. This uh, doesn't mean anything now for you maybe because there is only one branch. So we could uh, go further. Uh, we could create uh, another branch from the main branch. So we do follow. This is a type along until the exercise. Uh, so this is something um, I we wish that you type along. And I will try to go uh, slow. Now we have a little bit of a problem because uh, we need to be very careful about this master and main. So our instructions now mention master all the time. Some of the some of the participants will be called master now if they type with you and you type main. Okay, so yeah, one more. Uh, I also forget to change that actually. Yeah, me too. Um, but um, I wonder how we can we change it without complicating too much. Um, we could rename it to master so that we are all on the same page. But uh, I I think that there are people who will have me who use uh, different operating systems. So for them, it would be main. Okay. And for others, it, should, it will be masters, master. So what you could do is uh, you try git branch, then you, uh, you could see which is, uh, it's your main branch is main or master. So, if it's main, you use main instead of master in the course material when you copy uh, the um, commands. And if it's main, uh, if it's master, you just copy the command. That's all. 
I think that's okay. Good. Sounds good. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we are going to create uh, a new branch from the uh, main branch. So we, we are going to name a branch experiment. I would like to experiment with the glucomo recipe. So uh, I named that as a, they named the branch as an experiment and I'm going to create that branch from the main branch. For uh, those who are uh, our master, it's master, then just copy the uh, command. So now I created, uh, uh, a branch called experiment. And if I type git branch again, I could see that there are two branch, main or, or master and experiment. So, but you see that the asterisk is still there. That means the header is pointing towards the most, uh, the main branch or ma main or ma master branch. Can you also try git graph just as a com to compare yeah. how, the, how it looks? And there we see it. So the, the head, this is where we are right now. This is the recorder head. If we create new commits, this is where they will end up. It's now attached to main, not to experiment. We are not yet on the experiment branch. So if if I, I want to do some, I uh, test some ideas, which I am not sure whether it's working, and I don't um, go to the experiment branch and I try everything on this, this main branch is going to change, even though I created an experiment branch. So if before we uh, add any commit, any changes, we have to go to the experiment branch. So that the command for, for that is git checkout and branch name. In my case, it's experiment. You could uh, try that as well. And you can see that it's switched to branch experiment. If I go to git, like do git graph, you see the uh, header point to us to experiment branch, not the main branch. So you could type along with me that uh, first create the branch experiment from the main branch or master branch, and then uh, check out to experiment that switch to the branch and see if. Yeah. Uh, you are on the right branch. So and I'm also tapping if... along on my side, and I can also say that if people get lost, something doesn't work. It's not a, it's not a problem because we will have another excellent session, where this can then be discussed with others, or you can then catch up. Yeah. So if you if you say Git branch, then you could say that it's a pointer is uh, to us experiment, and if I. A type git status, the um, command uh, rather one suggested to use always this. It over, it says that's not the, which branch are you in, like on branch experiment. So these commands is good to use in between when you try. So now uh, we are on the branch experiment, but uh, if uh, if you see that there are same. Uh, as my main branch, and we are going to try out our new ideas. Uh, like we, if I want to have more cilantro in the my group in my recipe, so I'm going to okay, nano um, add some two two tablespoon of cilantro. You could do that. Uh, and please add on top of the file for certain reasons that. We want to avoid certain technical issues. Uh, we add this new line on top of the file. Yeah. So I'm adding uh, two tablespoon uh, cilantro. I should just try my idea. Okay. Yeah. Control O. I saved it and okay. I'm I'm not quite familiar with uh, Nano, but I uh, will try. Yes, I can. Now I want to save, yes. So I changed uh, my ingredients uh, file. I added two tablespoons of uh, cilantro. 
And now I want to stage the commit. Uh, staging it means that we are preparing uh, for the commit. So it's just repeating what we did uh, for the uh, earlier sessions, GitHub and I. And uh, I'm committing uh, this change uh, with a message. Uh, let us try with some cylinder. I'm just copying it. You could uh, type it either or copy this. Okay, yeah. I did uh, copy it wrong way. Oh, what happened? So now there are no quotes anymore. It says git commit minus m let because now it thinks that yeah. let, let is a file. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. All right, good, looking good. <laughs> so I I committed this. Okay, I'm mindful about the code. So I, uh, when you copy paste, it will be always nice to uh, copy only the lines. Or only the text. So if I would like try git graph. Yeah, we got a new commit now. Yeah, a new commit on experiment branch. And we also see that nothing changed to main. The main branch, the main sticky note, still sticks to the commit 1f96 and so on. So now that we made a commit, we always modify the branch where the head is, where the little star is. Um, and we want to do one more commit, I think, before we go on, because not everybody is a fan of cilantro. Yeah. So we want to do another commit where we reduce it. Yeah, we are. We are reducing it to oh, oh sorry. Uh, one. One. From two to one. So I'm saving it. So I'm going to stage the car. Uh, So maybe a little bit less. There's some alarm going on somewhere. Is this your sound or? Is, it, is there any sound? No, it's gone. No, it's. Okay. That's good. So I'm committing and that changes. So if I go to git graph, I have two commits and the latest uh, commit, the head is pointed to the latest commit on experiment branch. And still the main branch is the same with no changes. So this is uh, now we have created branch uh, and uh, we checked out to switch to the uh, experiment branch and we did some commit and we will follow, uh, we will merge it after do the ex exercise. There is um, an exercise for you to try. Are we going to do the exercise now or after the break, Radhavan? I think, I think before the break. Uh, before, before the break. Before the break, yes. Okay. Uh, we have 15 minutes for the exercise or? We have 15. If you need more, let us know through the HackMD, but we have planned 15. Yeah. There is, again, there are optional exercises below, which you are welcome to try out if you have time left. Yeah. So I will I will just say something, how, what you are expected to do. Like, 
Um, the goal of this exercise that uh, we end up with the three branches. Now, if we if you are typing along with me, you have two branches. And after the exercise, you are supposed to have one more branches. And so uh, first you are supposed to create a, a branch uh, named uh, less salt, or if you want to stay, uh, change name, that's fine. Uh, and you create the branch from the master, not from the experiment branch. So that's important that you need to go to the uh, switch, uh, switch to the main branch. Now, if you are following me, I was on experiment branch. The first thing you need to uh, uh, create a branch from master, and then you need to switch to uh, that branch and see git graph and uh, see where the pointer is in which branch and see whether um, and go through this uh, graphical representation and uh, try to uh, if the try to understand that this is what you have done with the uh, branching and now you can see uh, after creating a, a branch uh, you can switch to master and then create a readme file as I explained here. And then we will back uh, to the main room uh, to Twitch. And then we will have the break. Am I right? That sounds good. So here I also want to emphasize, so at the end, it should look a little bit like this. So you want to graph with three branches and we have this pictorial representation, but if you, also nicely that on our Git graph will start to look a little bit more interesting. It, um, it could happen when you create these branches, make sure that you create them from, from your master branch or from your main branch. Otherwise it will look different. It could happen that you get into a conflict. So there is something called Git conflicts if and this is not a problem. We will discuss Git conflicts later. So if, if that happens already now, then later we have another episode where we discuss how to, what they are, where they come from, and how to deal with them. Yeah. The but plan always, is mm -hmm. the plan is to merge after you come back here. And the goal of this exercise is to have three branches and uh, add readme file into your master or main branch. Good point. So we are we will branch together. Sorry, we will merge together, right? Be, uh, yes. Everybody should not merge yet. Only create branches. If, if you have enough time and you are quite familiar with merging, you can go ahead mm -hmm. with merging. And there is an optional exercise after merging. You can try that uh, that as well. Yeah. So our plan is so. now exercise. We will come back. Then we will take a break. After yes. the break, we merge and we discuss conflicts. Yes. Excellent. Should we say, should so, we say uh, 15 minutes? Like yeah, until, uh, until the, the hour. Okay, 12. We'll, we'll be back here at 12 and we'll go for break. Yeah. Okay. And we are back and welcome back. And I think Dania has the microphone. Yeah. Right. Yes, thanks. Uh, I will start share screen. Yeah, so welcome back. So uh, during the exercise, our goal was to create uh, three br uh, branches. So I suppose uh, all of you are able to uh, create uh, three branches. So if you type, uh, if you finish the uh, exercise and if you type uh, git graph, uh, you could see this uh, nice graphic representation of that. Uh, now my header points to the main branch, but I have two branches, less salt and experiment. And before we so, move on, maybe I can ask a few questions also, yes. lifting some questions from HackMD. The one question is, we are now on the main branch because that's where the head is. So how do I navigate between branches? How do I switch between branches? I think it's good if we repeat that part. Yeah. Uh, so 
the uh, git branch command is not the one we use to uh, switch between branch. Uh, that's uh, git checkout uh, and branch name. That's uh, mm -hmm. uh, what we use. But for the latest uh, version of git, there is another command which is more meaningful. It's git switch instead of checkout and branch name. And can you try that, like git checkout experiment, let's say, and then can we look at git graph again? Like how will that change? Yeah. And now what happened to the git graph? So now head is on experiment. And yes. if I want to know, go back to main, it's git checkout main. Yes. And then the other question that came up, and it's a really good question is, I mean, reading a little bit between the lines is, you mentioned that with git branch and branch name, we can create new branches, but where are they created from? So where will it appear? Ah, oh, if if I create a, a git uh, branch uh, uh, from uh, from where the header is, if without mentioning uh, the main, uh, then if I'm uh, my header is an experiment, if I'm creating a git branch with another name, then it should be it will create from where the header points to which branch, uh, which commit the header points to. Yes. Yes. So it will by default create it from our current location, which in this case is, if I read correctly, it's the commit b fifty six zero f. Oh, it is possible to create a branch from different places. Um, and we have implicitly done that. Uh, we will also come back to it tomorrow when we create a branch in the past, and we will see the value of that. But by default, it's always where the head is. All right. So now we are almost ready to talk about merging. Maybe let's let's go back to main or master. So yeah. that We are all on this. Let's, and how was that again? Get check out. Get check out yes. main. Yeah. Good. So uh, now I'm on. Git dot uh, always uh, nice to check, and I'm on main branch. And uh, a little out outlook now. We have 15 minutes left. It is 15 minutes. Our plan is we will discuss how to merge branches. We will also take more questions. In the hack and you also find a feedback section. We want to hear uh, how this how this went. And we will probably uh, move conflict resolution to tomorrow. So we'll probably start with that tomorrow morning. Not a problem at all. So yeah, now we have uh, we are happy with the experiment branch, so we can uh, merge uh, the branch to main. Because now my pointer is on a header is pointing towards the main branch. So uh, the command for that to get merge experiment and how to read this command so it says git merge experiment before maybe before we did enter what will happen this command will modify our current branch it will modify main in this case yeah so we always type which branch do we want to merge into our current position this this command will not modify experiment. It will modify, in this case, main. What we have modified on in, in experiment that's modified uh, that will be merged to the main branch. Yes. So. What happened now? So why did we get this? Oh, that's a good good thing. So this may or may not appear. Okay. But what does that mean? Why did we why did we open up the editor? Because I don't have any uh, messages, so it's uh, asking me to um, uh, add uh, commit message to explain why I'm merging this. So merging means always it's a commit. In my um, editor is nano, I'm trying to do the work here. So in this case, we are happy with the message merge branch. We could modify it, but we are okay with it. So you can, in this case, control X to get out of the editor. And it was important what you said. Uh, every merging typically creates a new commit. 
So if we, if we then uh, you could see this graphical representation and if you uh, try git graph, that's how it looks like. And you see the commit where uh, the um, merge branch ex um, experiment branch is merged to main. Um, so let's mention that git created a commit when we merge. And if you want to uh, view the um, branches that are merged, uh, we could uh, uh, use the command git branch merged. And we see uh, experiment uh, branches merged to me. But if you go, how many branches we have? We have uh, three. Uh, less salt is not uh, merged it, but we are happy and uh, we could uh, merge that also into the main branch. Should I type along? Should everybody type along? Yes, I guess yes. Right. This, yes. We don't have any exercise uh, today. Um, we are running out of time as well as uh, this is good to type hello and ask your questions on HackMD. Um, merging. A less salt branch as well. So it's a, a commit message uh, for branching. Right. And so then git graph. So git, uh, I would uh, put to git graph, yeah. So you could see that the head pointed to the it was the latest commit that's a merge branch less salt. So then, if you could uh, for these two experiment and less salt, we uh, tried to modify the file ingredients. So we could uh, see. So this cat command is a command that displays can be used to display content of a file. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the, the, uh, you see that uh, Git automatically turned this uh, changes when we merged this uh, two branches here without us doing anything manually. So that's um, nice. So in, in two different so in two different branches we have modified salt and what was it cilantro, right? Cilantro, and yeah. we try uh, adding more cilantro and less cilantro later. So all those things are merged to the main. Mm -hmm. And the uh, um, file, uh, the ingredients file got uh, modified according to that. So mm -hmm. now, nice. uh, now we have uh, three branches and two of this are merged to uh, main branches and uh, we could, uh, uh, we can delete the branch because uh, we are happy with the um, work. And maybe I can ask something uh, to Radovan, uh, how, uh, when should we merge uh, something? I mean, if you are working on that, how often? Uh, like, um, is this a good choice to merge branch after a long while? Then, if if so, uh, if we wait for long, what happens? So excellent question. So here we have this main branch or master branch, and very often in a project, this is what you you agree that this is our main development line, this is our working code, working script. This is where things are more or less working. Next week, we will add tests. And then we can define more what it means to have a working something. But this is what we have right now. So one question is, when, should, when do I want to merge into main or master? I want to do that when I think that my feature is more or less ready. Um, it is a good idea to make these branches not too long lived. In other words, not to put too much into a branch. Earlier today, we motivated that it's good not to put too many unrelated things into the same commit. It's also a good idea to not put too many unrelated ideas into the same branch. Small branches for small things, because then they will, I will be able to merge them back sooner. Um, but I can, maybe your question was also meant the other way. Uh, if I'm working on an experiment, how often should I merge 
main into my experiment branch? Well, maybe daily or weekly. So maybe you want to keep up to date with the development on main until the experiment is ready. So it mm -hmm. depends. Um, I can also lift up one question that is, I think is important that we discuss here before we merge. And it's a really good question. If we look at the graph, the Git graph shows that the branches are still there. There is experiment and there is less salt. And the question is, why are they still there? Are, are, aren't they somehow, are, aren't they absorbed into main? Didn't we in, incorporate it into main? And yes, we did. And the commits are absorbed. The commits are part of it. So if I want to know which commits are now part of main, all of them, all of the commits that we see, they are all, they all belong to main. So the commits got, got incorporated, but the sticky notes are still there. There is still a less salt sticky note sticking next to FAF9, and there is another sticky note next to B560. And I think what Daniel will show now is that maybe we can actually remove these sticky notes and nothing will happen to the commits. Yeah. So the uh, we could use uh, uh, we can see our uh, first we can see uh, the merge branch that means it's both experiment and less salt is may uh, merge to me and uh, now uh, we can delete uh, this branch so minus D is the option to delete and when we delete this we will see that commits don't get deleted. They are still there. The graph yeah. will still look the same, but the sticky notes will be gone. Yeah. And, Let's see. and do we need to delete them? Can we also just leave them there? What is, is there any problem leaving them there? Um, it's not a problem to, if uh, un unless, uh, we are uh, until we are working from main for next development. It's not a problem uh, to have a lot of branches. But uh, once the, we are done with uh, the emerging, the changes emerge to main branch. It's always uh, good to delete. We are okay with that. It's, so branches are cheap in terms of disk space. It's not a problem to have two hundred branches, but. At some point, it will be maybe difficult for you to have an overview. So one, I, I like to delete them once they are done, just to have more overview in my project. Um, Dania, how, how do you call your branches? Oh, what about branch naming? Uh, I, I would like to put uh, useful uh, um, branch names. Uh, if I'm working with uh, a lot of people, uh, mostly I put my name and as a short uh, phrase for my story, what which uh, part of uh, I'm working on, something like. And it's 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 uh, useful for me to uh, for me and others uh, to understand that I'm working on this specific uh, feature, or uh, after seeing the my branch name. So is it mm -hmm. the same for about you? Yeah, descriptive names, and sometimes even giving it prefix with my name so that I find my own branches if we are project with more people. Um, mm -hmm. There was a question on how to compare versions between branches. I wish I, I saw that earlier because now we already deleted them, but we can still mention it, that with git diff, you can compare also branches. I could have done the git diff main experiment, but even now that these labels are gone, we can still compare versions. So one thing that Dania could do is to I don't know, compare git diff some of these commits with another commit. So you can use these uh, these identifiers also directly. Yeah. Then you can compare what happened where, what is the difference. So I'm sorry that I also. No, no well, I, that's my task to watch it. I was too slow. We have okay. three minutes left. Maybe one more question. What is a tag? Yeah. Uh, tax is uh, um, it's a, it's a pointer, but uh, it will not move like uh, branches. So it's uh, it's permanent for a commit. That's how I see uh, tax. Mm -hmm. 
and it's record particular uh, milestone of my project. So if I want to release a specific version, it would always, uh, I will always put a tag on that specific version. And so when, do, when so branch is typically something that moves, tag is something yes. that doesn't move, or when do, you, when do you use the one, when do you use the other? When do you use a tag, for instance? Do you have an example? Uh, I would uh, uh, I I would um, to remember something some commits like uh, and annotate that that I did something uh, for the specific commit. That's where I use a tag to record some particular uh, milestone in my co uh, project. But for branches, when uh, I use it whenever I collaborate as well as when I want to try some ideas. And uh, like a tag could be a submitted version yeah. to the submitted to the manuscript or published because this is something that will not change. Yeah. All right, we have one and a half minutes left. So Maybe this is the way uh, to you can try uh, lab, uh, tagging with this command. So I'm not going to try it in seconds, but there are two types of tagging like weighted and annotated. I prefer to use annotated version because it has more information in. in within that. And one more thing I would like to say that I I have a tendency to go back and tag that you can do. If you want to go back to tag, you could uh, specify the uh, commit. Uh, then you can tag the commit if you are not uh, on the current. If you don't want to do the uh, tag on the current uh, commit, you can go back to the commit and uh, tag it later later also. And uh, there are, uh, I would like to go through the su summary. So um, we did branching and merging now, and uh, we use Git branch to see where we are. And uh, to create a branch, we use Git branch. And uh, from the if you want to create from the main, you have to specify a branch, uh, which uh, the main branch that you specify. Otherwise, it's always. Uh, always remember to be on the main branch, uh, check out to main branch before you create a branch from the main. And uh, git merge to merge to the main command and uh, delete branch. Um, so if you want, if you have some unmerged uh, branches, uh, which you think it's not a good uh, and it doesn't work as you wish, as you thought, then you could uh, uh, delete without merging and that's and you also you opt for minus D option. And there are some typical workflow uh, to create, uh, create branch and switch to the branch and then check out and merge the branch to the um, main. And uh, if you can delete after merging. And you could do that without merging as well if it's not, uh, if the work you have done with the branching is not uh, something you wish to incorporate to the main uh, main development line so that you can do. There is uh, one question to test your understanding which of the following combos create a new branch and makes a commit to it. Uh, are we going to put it in the HackMD? And if you could think about this option. There is also a solution and we are already over time uh, here. Yeah, so yeah, there are some more uh, more materials here, uh, different meanings of checkout. You could go through this and uh, probably nice that we summarize everything today. Right on. Yes, and uh, what are we going? So today we created commits and branches. Uh, Thanks so much for the feedback that is coming in. So on the bottom of the HackMD, we ask for feedback, wanting to improve, one thing that was good. Also, thanks for listing the things that we should improve. So we need to clearly state when type along starts. There were some issues with timing, we will adjust. Um, tomorrow we will start with conflicts. We will learn some really useful commands to navigate the Git history. And we will share our recipe on GitHub. And also, we will try to create some mistakes and fix them using Git. That's for tomorrow. Thanks so much for your yeah. questions and patience with HackMD.
and thanks thank for you. listening and watching. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So I'm sharing the hack and email. Uh, okay, I see what's wrong with my microphone. I don't know how that happened. Test. Um, but yes, please fill out the feedback. Um, this is the best way we have to improve for tomorrow. So what should people expect for tomorrow? It will become a bit more challenging and fast. Um, today was sort of the day that we used to slowly start off everyone and make sure everyone's on the same page. Yeah, hopefully it will not get faster, but it will get... Oh, there will be new things for everybody. Uh, we will have, again, two exercises tomorrow. One of them will be longer, one of them will be half an hour. Because there is more to do, more to explore. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll leave the sharing and see you tomorrow. If you haven't signed up, please do and you will get emails. Okay. Now something changed with your microphone, Richard, but I think it message got through. Yeah, is it better now? Yes. See you next time. Looking forward. See you soon. Bye. See you soon. Uh, I will uh, let me know anything is there rather when I'm I'm going to be offline. See you tomorrow. Thanks for today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.